Daniel Tess, one of the only EU rosters to make it here that didn't make changes this year. Alongside Rival, I should say. Those two teams, everybody else pretty much mixed up somewhere or another. And it's important to see how Dignitas do this year. Trick Tank been around the scene since the beginning. The very beginning of the launch tournament, once upon a time, alongside Cubo Fred, who's, you know, his Danish brother in arms that will always be together. Yeah, we, we always talk about Jeff and Barrow. Where's the Trix and Cubo love? The man? great Danes, too. I, I really do think that, that we've got a better chance of seeing either Jeff or Barrow decide that they're doing something else, you know, they're done before Cubo and Trix break up. I they, they, they are stuck together. Maybe the, one day they'll make a team together, all four of them. On the same team. Yo, that'd be crazy. And then just throw in one other person, like Baskin. There all right, well, go. what is Trix going to play? Because we all know that Jeff's not leaving support. It's a good point. It's a good point. Well, we'll find that out in the future. Yeah. Last Trix, what other role he'll make? Is that a preview of the Season 7 script there? Shh, don't tell Maybe. him yet. Maybe, oh, that, maybe that's false, but who knows? Yeah. Circuit <laughs> and Terra band out. Same two bands as Game 1 from both the teams so far. Dignitas don't want to deal with the Circuit. Obviously, you mentioned early game. So, Cat, once she hits five, technically, does have a very good early game. Interesting. Sobek fan. This was Achilles before. I think I think Dig just wants to play Achilles. I'm going to be honest with you. That's what it feels like to me. Potentially. I also think Variety just doesn't want to have to play it if it's available. All lane against it. I think Variety wants to have a bit more fun. This game is what I'm really expecting. Here. You would, wouldn't would be surprised by that either. Wants to have a warrior v. warrior matchup, if possible, because you know that Variety is going to get his fill of Sobek later on against the other SPL teams. He'd like to play against something else right now at least. Obviously this is the best of three once again. Dignitas versus Weak on Su Servo. Losers go to the losers bracket. Yes, Winners huzzah! move on to face either Space Station Gaming or Black Dragons, the last set of today. You called it. He wanted to play the Achilles and they're going to get to play it here. Dignitas oh. have Achilles. I wonder if Variety's going to get it though. It could be for QO Fred. Check the all arguing. In the jungle. Oh yeah, Trix even wants to I play mean, this thing. Zero, Z Baskin's played it in mid, so Zeros might That's want true. it. That's true. That's true. Maybe not Arco. I think Arco might be the only one. Who doesn't Arco want it. doesn't want it? No, I don't think so. What should Ar be him? Yeah, okay, if Arco plays this Achilles, then number one, I know they can hear us, eat and we can soap. make sure that they can fix that. Sure, Hindu man, I will eat soap. Okay, we got Servo with two picks of their own. Last time round, they had the Sobek, and I believe it was the Fafnir alongside it, if I remember correctly. Yes, yes, those, those, uh, that was their first two picks last time. I doubt we'll see the Sobek because it's banned, so they can't. But start. I don't think that we'll see the Fafnir either, necessarily. I, I want to see some early pressure opportunities. They could go back to the Fafnir if they really want to, but I don't know. I, I just feel like that wasn't bringing enough out of that support role. They don't have to need to worry about once upon a time. They're going to take the all this time. Lots of pressure with an all, obviously. The combination of abilities combining so well together, the burst damage is insane on all. And they'll get the Nemesis too. I like the Nemesis pick. Yeah, these are two pretty good picks right off the bat here. So uh, I don't mind where we got in Servo is going. This is early pressure oriented and can still has that late game potential. Nemesis, not so great pre-level five, but from level five onwards, she, she's really, really solid. I mean, you mentioned early pressure. If that is a Chak, then Achilles and Chak together is immense early pressure. But no, will be Athena. Can solo, can jungle, can also be put in the support role for Trix Tank. Plenty of options available for Dignitas so with their first two picks. Interesting. Me, ah, so zero showing two ends of the coin. One, the, the Neath that's going to provide pressure in the early game and fall off pretty heavily towards the late. Thoth is not going to provide a lot of pressure early, but plenty of late game damage potential and CC. So this is uh, Dignitas again just saying Space Station's got to be ready for whatever we're going to throw at him. I mean, Zeros was talking to me just before this set, and he was talking about how he likes playing Toth, just because you have the potential to 1v1 on Toth a lot of the time. If you can land the initial damage and then wait for your cooldowns and then go again on the next rotation with your stun, you can pick up a kid, and he likes to find the 1v1s. It's true. Thoth is, it's kind of funny that a god that usually doesn't get talked about as an early game god by any stretch has some of the better early to mid even 1v1 potential mm -hmm. in the mid lane just because he can get up on you so quickly and it's not like Agni Dash where if he's not, you know, it's very hard to proc that Agni Dash on the enemy and a lot of times you need that if you're going to find that solo kill. Agni and Thoth are two gods that can really find those 1v1s pretty easily in the mid lane and I'm sure that Zero is going to be going for it at some point here. Well, we gone Servo, the Oceana representatives, going to focus towards junglers here. They move the Achilles and Athena and not in the jungle. They're going to take away the Darji, trying to limit the god pull there. Whereas Dignitas a little bit worried about Odin against their comp. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. Obviously, we gone Servo still need a mage potentially for the mid lane. They could run the Ool. They could run the Ooler in the middle lane. And with the Fafnir, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Usually when you see Fafnir, you're thinking towards double hunter and that's exactly what we are in servo did soul maybe in that last game i was thinking soul in the last one would have been solid and i think it could be here as well but that is a god that thoth can jump all over in the early game before soul stellar burst is clearing you really need to be level eight or nine before that starts to happen 
you have to be worried about that all-in potential of someone like a Thoth. He can kill you before that disapparate finishes getting you into corporeal form. I think I would have banned Ra, but if I'm going for junglers, if I'm weak on Servo here, I want to take away Raven from Cubo 100%. as well, more than anything else, but going to be the Kukulun and the Dodgy. So they're, they're confused just as much as we are about yeah. where is Achilles and Athena going. They split the difference there and say, all right, okay. well, yeah, we'll ban one jungle, one solo, and we'll see what you have for us. But yeah, I agree with you. I think Cubo can happily lock in a Robin selection now and just feel like he got away with something because getting uh, Achilles, Athena, and Robin is like the hunt very, very hard to deal with. Will be double hunters for Wegong server. Like Prospect and Envisionize will be taking the, Beware. sorry, not Envisionize, 50 Sorry. will be taking the ult to the mid lane there. And her locked in Love response it. for our kill. This is a, I've been waiting for this Classic, counter pick right? to start coming back up because it's such a great counter pick into Artemis. Artemis has such difficulty oh God, with no the slow that the Shifting me. Sands provides. But the big reason that Ar that on her is thought of as a counter to Artemis is as soon as the that boar comes out from Artemis' ult, on her just uses Desert Fury. And not only does he not get stunned, but that's damage you can put into the Artemis. Artemis has no way to respond to your leaps in a lot of the time unless she's ulting right away. Uh, I think this is a great counter matchup, and I don't think we've seen enough on her with how prevalent Artemis has been in the meta. I do think Artemis may struggle this game as well. If you think about it, four of these gods have CC immune ultimates, or even with Raven in this case, has the ability to escape a Bacchusora. Being hovered over by Weak on Servo here. For solo lane up against an Achilles right potentially here? No, Artia. Okay. Artia, okay. Yeah. I was like, ah, there's the troll over with. I mean, it, it, I wouldn't have hated the Bakasura, to be honest. Again, you're not going to be digged by just playing regular Smite. I really don't feel it. But into an Athena? You're still playing Dignitas, right? You can you can say whatever you want about whatever picks they're going for, but at the end of the day, you got to look across the way, press tab, and be like, oh, we're in trouble now. The Ardeo selection makes some sense here. The Cripples are going to help against the Achilles and the Thoth and the, and the on her and that kind of stuff. But I still think Wegar and Servo has got quite a mountain to climb. Did they go for the early game draft that you were hoping for, though? Certainly better. I, I could see them doing a little bit better in the early game. But the problem with this composition if, is, it, is if it falls behind, their late game really doesn't scare me very much if I'm on Dignitas. Uh, th this, this has to go well early for Wegar and Servo. Do we get a game three? No. Well, with that, we'll head over to the casters to see if we do get a Game 3. It's Dig versus Week on Servo, Game 2. Aggro going out on a bit of a limb there, predicting that it might be Dignitas that wins Game 2. So we'll see if that ends up being what happens here. Finch and Tully going to be bringing you the cast here. We got Servo, Servo up against Dignitas. And Tully, you with Aggro on this one? I, I mean, know that's a, he's out, I know it's a, a hot take. It's a bold move. I right. don't know if I can honestly follow that train. <laughs> I don't know how, what you guys at home feel about that, but get your votes in now here. And I believe it was what? 85% or something like that that believed yeah. that Dignitas would dominate game number one, and certainly they did here. Yeah. yeah, it was one of the largest margins, I think even last set, and rightfully so, with with Nocturnes, it was a pretty big margin, or a pretty close margin between the teams, so glad our chat is recognizing the actual strength of these matchups and adjusting accordingly as we move into game one. But there's pl plenty to talk about with these compositions. The double hunters coming out from Wegar and Servo, Swifty on the Uller, Reagan on the Artemis. It's more aggressive, that's for sure, because and Karninos in the mid lane, it just feels kind of awkward here because sure. he definitely relies on that passive, the shifting of the season, or once you get some ranks in there, to be able to have that flexibility for any given scenario. But when you lose early game, you no longer have that flexibility to dictate the pacing of the game. That was all Kibo Fred last game. And this time around, Envision Eyes going to try to fight fire with fire here with a nemesis that was not picked in that last game specifically. It was banned in that secondary oh, phase. Wow. Dignitas going to have to use the beads there. Forced out very early were the beads from Arkle over here in the duo lane. Now, I suppose if he's going to use them, it's better to use them early on because by the time there's another threat, likely they'll be back up for him again. But quick on those beads, making sure he does not get punished as Arkle here in duo as the hammer comes in again. Sprint actually being used. Destiny wants to go in, but gets impaled. And then a counter sprint. Dignitas are actually going to chase out Regan here instead. Destiny going to take more damage than he really wanted to the slow onto Arkle yet again. And I think that Arkle uses beads preemptively at level one, fearful of the RNG crits from Regan. Tricks tank and a dash to the wave. I think both those sprints we saw were the upgraded sprints as well. We saw them like moving with that haste effect uh, so that they didn't have the, the movement ability for the auto attack. So both of them using this aggressive sprint. Usually it can be kind of defensive, but they definitely were using them aggressively. Couldn't find any kills, but the lane control goes to Dick. Zero's doing a good job juking away from that Ularax. Stun not on the mark with Swifty wow. here. 
And yeah, compared to that last game, I'm not surprised that Dignitas over 90% here. Dignitas are definitely being favored, at least by those in Mixer chat. And I got to agree with you. They had such a strong performance game one. It's no reason to doubt them again. I do want to zone in on the guy that kind of made that happen for him. Kivo Fred looked excellent game one on the Robin this game. And starting with that round shield, Tolly, I don't know if this is something that we see all the time. It's a little bit different here, getting some protections and physical power here. You're not really starting off with that many potions compared to certain other builds, but you're definitely still in a good spot. But not Arkill, however, he doesn't have his jump here at level one. And they're going to make sure he doesn't get hammered, and he does. Reagan finds him, stuns him, and takes him down. First blood over to Weegarn Servo. A much better start here in game one. No beads available, two. considering that it had to have been used at level one. I think that he kind of definitely was too worried about the early game here, and he... The purple buff invade specifically, when you're looking to play that aggressive, you need to make sure that the stars align, that there can be nothing interfering with you and your destiny. But this is good news, though. They get a kill on the duo, and look who's way up at the top of the experience charts. It's Swifty on this Uller, and by a pretty significant margin at 600. Could get punished here, though, forced to jump away from the rotation from Qvo Fred. So he'll be okay and keep farming up. Just being able to absorb all that solo farm while Envisionize makes those rotations in the duo lane allows the best of both worlds, finding a kill in the duo lane and surviving in the mid. Did have to use the beats, so Dignitas taking note of that. They're writing down the timer there in the chat and making sure that they abuse it while it's still down for another 135 seconds. Variety. Gonna keep KO at the tower line. I think this is not too surprising for the Warrior Achilles to early on have some lane pressure up against the RDO in the solo lane. Blue buff is spawning, but no invade attempt, it looks like, from Dig. So uh, this time, KO will be able to enjoy his blue buffs. Considering that Envisionize <laughs> made that first rotation to the solo lane side, RDO plays very similar to a Sobic where you desperately need that blue buff before level 9. A couple of times, actually, here. You're only really relying on the MP5 from your Breastplate of Valor once that's completed and the cooldowns to start winning the trades against Variety. Right, he's going up aggressively, though, trying to fight into Wigarn Servo. Not going to be able to get there in time to stop the blue buff from being dropped, but at least get some poke back. But Envision Eye is still lurking around. Kivo has made the rotation, but he's focused more on the blue than the lane, but I think he'll be here in time to help. Laning phase will heavily favor Variety, considering he went for the teleport. Already using it once, came back to the laning phase with the Warrior Tabai, so he has so much extra physical power to augment those abilities, whereas KO hasn't backed yet, still only with the Warrior's Blessing, opted for Sprint, so whenever he does decide to back, if he times it in a bad spot, he might lose some minions under that tower. And it's not the goal that matters realistically. It's all about the experience trying to hit that level 12 marker for the second relic. And you talk about how teleport helps so much in lane. I mean, we've seen it be a strong teamfight relic too, like backing and letting you get another health bar. You do have to invest a little more gold into it if you want to go to wards. But I mean, this, this teleport relic, I feel like, has really had a resurgence in Season 5. It really enables the soul to do some cool stuff. Especially, you know, just refreshing your health chalice stacks is a big deal with some of the laning phase tactics you want to do here in the solo lane. Potentially bullying out an RDO before the swipes start really significantly hurting you. And more importantly, before the sustain from RDO starts tipping the skills. That's when RDO is going to be looking for a lot of trades once she hits that level 8 to 9 marker. Yeah, I mean, we've seen it in Sieges in particular, right, where you're slowly trying to whittle down your opponents. Being able to send your solo laner who tanks up so much of that damage in those late-game Sieges back and then have them in the fight again so quickly, I mean, it really can be really important. So we can trust someone like Variety to be able to squeeze all the value this, out of this teleport. Pick. This is frisky here. Variety proxying between Tier 1 and Tier 2, but Envision is getting sidetracked there by those back harpies. Envision is going to get stunned out and executed. Variety catches Envision in the jungle and punishes him greatly. Able to interrupt him while he's going to farm, and then he's like right back to the proxy wow. farm, right? Like, let's just clean it up. I'm, I'm, I'm level seven. I do what I want. And Vision Eye should have predicted, like, hey, Variety just finished clearing the tier one to tier two mid or solo lane wave. There's no way I have time to do this, but he definitely thought he could have that level five nemesis here. If he got all of points of his abilities, he only has two points in that slice and die, so that wasn't enough burst damage to stop Variety from stealing that one away. He is going to be able to steal away that blue buff, though. Make life even harder for KO, who, ascent, who regrettably is getting some of the, the punish there after Envision Eyes gets caught out in the jungle. 
Now the Oracle's gonna be going the way of Team Dignitas too, as Defender of Olympus is coming out. They're looking for Reagan and they're gonna find him. Trick's Tank gets the last bit of damage necessary and Reagan has to sit it out. Even with the CC immune ultimate from an Artemis here, not having a dash, a jump, a gap closer can significantly hurt you and they're not done yet. Dignitas with another taunt. Destinate, as soon as he drops back in, is gonna be Mystic Rust, Arkle. Finds him with the impale, no chance for him to even get the jump off. Another kill going to Dignitas. It's three to one now. Just good timing there from that Mystic Rush. Normally you want to use your jump to chase down the enemy. Like, all right, like maybe I guess he didn't have the prod onslaught to finish the job there, but really well timed there. Because if you mistime that, not only does do you not have it now to chase them down, but they're gonna get away for free and you don't have your ultimate. So Dignitas with a clean three one thus far in game number two. But not having a significant goal lead without all these blue buff invades against KO. That's right. They've been able to find the kills, but not so much the map control like they had before. Just now, Variety did start the first blue buff invade after that kill, so perhaps we'll see them try and repeat that. We'll see if Kuvo Fred wants to come join them. I think that's been a bit of a difference, though. Kuvo has been... Not, I, I don't know if quiet's the right word, but quieter than game one. <laughs> I think it's also the combination of Zeros now playing the global pressure in the sure. middle, which really enables certain kills for Kivo Fred in the last game. This time, looking for a more team fight centric focus where Trick Stank on the Athena, easy dash taunt opportunities, easy Defender of Olympus re engages. Then also Zeros piloting this Thoth. He's really looking for that long distance setup. Desert Fury has to be used by Arkle. He even gets the impale to stop Destiny from chasing him out any further. So Reagan can't quite get into range to follow up, and that means Arkle is going to be A-OK -okay with the 1v2 in duo. Goal Fury not going to be looked at quite yet, but Variety going to be able to look for some of these solo invades with a two-level advantage now. Runic Shield on him yet again. He really likes this item. Doesn't matter if it's against the Sobek or an Ardeo, limiting some of this magical damage is going to be a great opportunity to diminish what KO is able to do to Dignitas' backline. Envisionize is here, I think, wanting to stop them from taking the Oracles, but not going to get there in time. Trick Stink does take a good bit of damage, but not going to be able to grab him. Envisionize, I believe, had to use the beads, predicting there would be more control than there was. Kilvo Fred makes it out with the overhead kick. That's crazy. Zeros takes down Destinate as well, and he's not done. Invade and punish is certainly going to punish Envisionize. Just pure calculation from Kilvo Fred. He knew that he would barely be able to escape with his life, and Reagan having to use the beads there. Arkill not going to be able to find that one without the Desert Fury which was used defensively, but it's coming off of cooldown here momentarily. And yeah, Kivo Fred, I interviewed him not too long ago today, and, <laughs> and uh, actually FDOT asked him the question, I'm like, so who's the best jungler? And then Kivo Fred looked around, he's like, uh, it depends on the day, but uh, it's me. And he certainly is playing like it as Variety is in a heap of trouble, or maybe not. Swifty gets very low and is forced to retreat. Destinate has the damage. KO's here to try and help finish this off as well. Variety's still clinging to life, but only for a moment. Two-man stun sets up for Wegon Servo to turn around. But now Destinate has to leave KO on a bit of an island. The rest of the team cannot lock the bear down and will have to settle for the speed buff instead. Going to be able to steal that one away. KO is still here. He's going to get stunned out from Zeros, but without a dash now, Zeros could be in a little bit of trouble, but... Not going to force anything yet. Wegarn Servo just going to look for some farming on the left side of the map. And Visionize looking to wrap around here. But without Blink, he can't really catch anyone slipping. So is that right, Tolly? Even the enemy speed has to go to the jungler? He's got his own. He couldn't let Trix have that one? Nah, I mean, at this point, you definitely want to enable Cubo Fred to keep rotating on. Extend the live timer there because you're going to have your own speed buff to make sure that you get theirs upon the next cycle. It's just a consistent cycle that never ends for junglers. Keep that speed buff timer refreshed on the jungler. And Cubo Fred is going to keep up the pressure. 5-2 to two now for Dignitas. Still... Not a tremendous lead for them, at least in the gold department. Looks like just about a thousand, just under. Experience, though, much more significant. 2,500 experience, so those level gaps are going to start to become a bigger problem for them. And because I see where it's really hurting them right now is the support role, Tricks and Destiny. It's just a methodical, calculated game from Dig and Toss where they're not trying to invade every single side of the map, but they're just taking whatever they can get here. Variety definitely feeling himself at times. He's not fearful of looking for those proxies, you know, casually just finds some vision eyes of the back harpies, and then casually looking to go between the tier two and the Phoenix, and then finding more kill slash invades. So really leaning on the aggression where it matters and looking for where the holes are that Dig and Toss can poke into. Goal Fury, not the answer quite yet or the hole rather, so that's why Wegar and Servo not significantly at the deficit that they were in the last game. 
Trickstink is here near the Gold Fury. He has Arco with him if they want to look at it. But I mean, right there are Destinate and Reagan, so certainly Weegar and Servo would know this was happening. Instead, they're going to back up, try and go for the Ward Control. Oracles going to likely be going the way of Weegar and Servo, but Kiva Fred is right here on the backside, and he's looking for Envision Eyes. Has Defender of Olympus coming, but he's getting punished for the damage. Oh, no, Reagan's just too strong. Kiva Fred yet again walking the tightrope and setting up kills for Dick. Dignitas are going to Servo here, actually. They're getting all the meat pies, all the Red Bulls, and all the snacks for the boys here, finding that little flank. Kiva Fred dunking on them with the Defender of Olympus here. Dignitas really flexing on the Aussies. And it's only Destinate on this side of the map, not even Destinate on this side of the map. Now, Gold Fury certainly going to be free for Team Dignitas as Envision Eyes is instead going for the speed buff invade and KO's just got a farm over in solo. Gold Fury and three kills all going the way of Dignitas. They give up nothing in exchange. The black and yellow crew really playing lights out here in the second game. Like I mentioned before here, they have something to prove here. So that's maybe also why they're not feeling too bold to overstep any sort of boundaries. They're still playing their own game. All the picks you see there on your screen are the style of Dignitas here. You know, Achilles for variety, Kiva Fred playing the Robin. Zeros and Thoth are just like two fingers crossed together here. Now, Trix Tank playing the Athena, not really his style. He has played a lot though in the past and with the aggressive style from Dignitas, it definitely fits in here. But I like what we're seeing from, from Cubo Fred. I mean, how many fights now has Cubo kind of been the one that starts the fight, goes in aggressively, just barely makes it out? Well, he's itemizing like that's the plan. He's got the Void Shield. Sometimes we see Crushers prioritized earlier or other damage items, but Cubo going to go right into some protection. His trick just kind of waving. And look at the player cam there. He's just <laughs> smiling about it as well. And Vision Eye stops what he was doing. He's like two people passing by a path. They're like two hikers kind of deal. It's like, oh, hey, what's up? How's your hike? Oh, it's going pretty good here. How about yours? As they trade blows here in the mid lane. But yeah, you were talking about that Void Shield for Cubo Fred. And this is more of a season two item that's been heavily favored then because of the way Solo and Jungle really fight neck and neck. And I think with the Robin and Achilles combination, one of those two gods should definitely get it. And Dig decided for Kibo. Kiwa Fred steals the speed buff, Defender of Olympus, to help him disengage along with the Mystic Rush, but actually Ultimate dropped on the Trick Stank. Weegar and Servo wants to try and punish the Athena. They're going to be able to dies to get Kiwa Fred out and might not even get that as the Sprint comes out. Now they're going to lock him down. Two kills for Weegar and Servo, punishing the overaggression for Dig. I mean, Kiwa Fred was definitely out if he wanted to. He did not need to go back in there and punch the four members surrounded Trick Stank, but instead it's setting up for the final judgment. Zeros finds one but a third dig victim here. Variety falling to Envision Eyes. Dignitas finally getting a bit ahead of themselves as Zeros wants to try and find a couple other low health targets. The Root and the Cripple going to keep him locked in. Swifty finds the Axe. Aegis gets forced out. Now has the Invade and Punish available. That's enough to keep Swifty at bay for now. But it's not going to be enough to keep KO at bay who takes Zeros down. That's four members that have fallen overall in this engagement. Servo have kind of come back at least in the fighting part. And Arco, meanwhile, here just casually stealing away the red buff against Reagan with that long distance Desert Fury. Not able to re- fresh it here outside of that circle long enough but oh no swifty though still had the beat so tricks tank won't be able to clean that up but still going for the pyromancer not gonna be able to finish it though tricks tank along with cubo fred that's when they're really worried about not letting him stop it that's kind of like when like you know like your little brother's like waving but you're in the background like no you're dealing with really with me like, so cubo fred's the one they were really worried about and we and Servo have to retreat. And unfortunately for the Aussies here, they're not able to get the objective after the fact. They no. were just too low in the health department to make the extended play. Still keeping themselves relatively, not even, but they're mitigating some of the bleeding compared to that last game. So they're definitely still in it here. Their team fighting composition certainly will be felt once this Artemis gets to the late game. Struggling behind Arco a little bit. Reagan, two levels behind, but... This Fafnir should be able to really help some of those basic attacks come online faster. Now, Weegar and Servo have certainly been capitalizing, yes, 
but Dignitas kind of getting a little bit ahead of themselves, I would say. Kivo Fred going for that speed buff invade and then coming back into the fight after Trick Tank basically gives his life up to save him. You know, so a little bit overcommit from Dig, but Servo have to take those opportunities when they're given to him and capitalize, which they have at least done. It's one thing where you're invading a speed buff, but it's another when you only are relying on Trick Tank's global ultimate to do so. If you don't have zeros around the corner to assist, now you're really asking to get invade or to get rotated on. That's what we and Servo just did. They're like, oh, okay, you're just invading our speed buff yet again. Well. Let's make a retaliation play in numbers. Their strength in numbers, and that's exactly what Weegar and Servo finally realized to uh, at least retaliate upon losing their own speed. The Pyromancer, though, does get taken away as Trick Stink dashes in for the taunt. Reagan is going to be in a little bit of trouble now, trying to put some autos into Kiva Fred, who has to retreat. The boar going to come out and force everyone away. Arkel. Was able to disengage just barely, but the fight rages on. And Vision Eyes is looking for Cubo Fred. Slice and dice. The slows are good, but overhead kick just a little bit better. Cubo's out. Needs to find some sort of ability over the wall, but a nice three-man taunt from Trix saying it could be Trix. That is the first victim, unless Swifty gets targeted out. Q KO taking out one. Then the back line, Fatal Strike not covering the distance. Zeros is able to get close enough to finally take down Swifty, but it cost him his own life to get it done. Variety now stuck trying to box up against four. Is slowed. He's rooted. Now he's crippled and stunned as well. The rest of the damage can finally come raining in. Arkel trying to deter them, but KO is not afraid. It continues to chase. Envision Eyes blinks over the wall, slice and dice. Still not enough with the big heal, keeping Variety alive. Still alive for now. Envision Eyes needs to retreat the left hand side. Man, only losing two members. Zingtos counting their lucky stars as Variety walks away unscathed from that one and with Swifty dead we go and Servo needs to all back because Envision Eyes was too low here but he's still sticking around the left hand side the golf here could easily be stolen away KO's here getting punished though between the on her and the Robin so can't stick around too long is at least delaying them on this Gold Fury. But no one's really nearby. I think this Gold Fury is going to go the way of Team Dignitas. I mean, Reagan's too far as his destiny. Dignitas take it and push their goal a little bit further out as well. Envision Eyes just didn't back in time there. And finally, it allowed Variety to get back in the thick of things. He used his teleporter at that Tier 1 tower. Stopped Envision Eyes from backing. He had to cancel it several times, actually. And Dignitas recognized when the objectives are open for business and they got there at the early bird special. Gold Fury gonna push Dignitas further out into the lead. KO though has looked great for Weegar and Servo, kind of their bright spot at 3-0 oh, and 4. I do want to ask you though about this Heartward Amulet. There was some discussion about it earlier. Do you like this as the magical defense item for the solo laner is maybe not? Destiny's in trouble and forced to jump away. I don't really mind it too much. You get the health, you get the magical protections. You're giving MP5 to your teammates, a magical protection for your teammates. And against a god such as Thoth, giving your teammates magical protection is never a bad thing. That final judgment covers a lot of space. Not through time and space, like certain characters, but definitely <laughs> can match it the damage-wise, and that's what you're really looking out for. Now, there are better selfish items. You're looking at specifically Pestilence. You're also looking at specifically the Bulwark of Hope, but I like the idea in terms of keeping some of your teammates alive as well with this Aura item. It's kind of the only way a support can really help you not die to a final judgment, right? You can't, like, body block it. You know, you maybe you can interrupt him from casting it, but just giving a little bit of extra protection to your backliner might be that thing that lets him escape with a little bit more HP as Variety has KO and Destiny to deal with in solo, but I don't know that he minds. Definitely not going to be looking for the kill anytime soon without a real damage dealer. And outside of magical defense items, it's not like KO can invest in the Runic Shield. That requires physical power to do right. so. So unless Envisionize is picking that one up later down the road, then the damage from Zeros is going to be through the roof here. Already sitting at the top of the charts, nearing that 15,000 marker as we approach the 20 minute mark. Zeros has been having a great game for himself so far. Already has the Soul Reaver finished off. So we've seen how strong that build with the Soul Gem, Soul Reaver, Obsidian Shard can be, especially at blowing up one target sort of all at once. We'll see if he can replicate that again as Kivo aggressive onto Reagan. Already forced out the Aegis and the ultimate. 
Really nowhere for him to go against the two-man gank. As Zeros finds Swifty in mid when it rains, it pours. And now they can go for duo lane tier two. And this is how Dignitas are just so experienced. They know where the play is. And not only do they know where the play is, they can see three steps down the road. It's like, all right, we can get this tier two afterwards. So immediately with a rotation, Zeros was right there. Varieties in the mid lane, making things happen to at least zone a few members from assisting the out of position Reagan. That wasn't really out of position. He was just barely outside his own tier two tower. But yeah. because that the Chaos side doesn't have the vision outside of their own jungle. That was an easy, clean pick. Destinate now gets taunted back in as Tier 2 Tower in mid is destroyed. Dignitas not going to look for any more of a fight. They really don't need to. They got what they wanted, and now they can cleanly go for the Disengage totally. Pyromancer's up if they want it. Fire Giant as well. All five members, though, of Weegar and Servo are back on the map, so they got to be careful. In particular for Envision Eyes, you talked about this Nemesis pick for him. Uh, he's got the stone cutting sword into the Hasten Katana here. So, I mean, you know, he might be able to come in and cause some problems. Going for the basic attack build, I don't really mind it, despite having the Crusher. Zeros is going to be the focus he here. Is. Getting the final judgment off, thinking that he was going to die, but instead returning the favor. Final judgment is more than enough to get it done. Zero is just barely surviving. But I think we saw what the build was trying to do, right? With those autos, Envision is able to stay alive a little bit longer and stick to zeros. Just too much good peel there from Trix. Very true here. Just playing around their own teammates there. Even Trix Tank right around the corner with his mid laner, Zeros, man, he knew the perfect <laughs> window of like, oh, okay, I'm gonna die to one more basic attack. Let me charge this for as long as I possibly can. And I thought, and Zeus was dead to rights. And I thought he definitely thinks so as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, with this advantage here for 10 seconds, not going to be able to stretch it to a goal. Fury said it's still down for 35 seconds. But positioning around the fire giant, I think they're going to be looking for some counter wards, maybe then some. It's just KO over here. So they certainly have a chance to try and pull this one, at least bait KO into a bad spot. Zero is going to dash in and get the stun off. So it's a good, a good bit of damage that frees up Arkle and the rest of Dignitas to start pulling this Fire Giant. It's already at half health, and I don't think Servo are going to be able to make their way to this pit at all. In fact, they'll be lucky if they don't lose the 2v4. Variety is able to use the Fatal Strike to dash right on out of there. Fire Giant still standing, and Dig are able to claim it. Able to blink away from the thick of things. Trick Tank, though, is going to be left high and dry, but not before Cubo finds Envision Eye. So it is a one for one, and Dig are the ones who are fire giant. Kivo Fred comes right back in for a double kill. Destinate falls to Arkle as well. Halo Barrel's not going to be good enough. Swifty gives a double kill over to Arkle as well. KO falls. side coming up for Dignitas. The Zeros takes down the RDO solo laner with four members still standing and fire giant. They can go wherever they want. Just overcommitted a little bit too long. They needed to get through Variety. I understand the thought process. Variety is being that buffer and the zoning patrol to stop them from invading Dignitas's efforts on the fire giant, but without the boar pinging throughout the rest of the team, it was easy for Dignitas to really clean up, take Regan out of the equation, and then look for everyone else after the fact. Phoenix on the right hand side's in trouble, was the mid Phoenix has minions coming for it too, and Trick's tank is right back in the thick of things with Defender of Olympus. They can come right over to mid Phoenix and threaten it as well. Only Destinate and Envisionizer here. Reagan's on his way, but not going to be in time. Mid Phoenix is going to fall as well, and Visionize has to retreat. Very important that Variety was still in the middle Phoenix once his last minion died to continue the backdoor elimination for the rest of the teammates to clean that mid Phoenix up. Now, left side's being looked at here, trying to defend his Weegar and Servo, but KO going to get executed from that one. And that was almost entirely without the damage from Zeros, as Swifty is able to at least return the favor on the tricks, but Variety finds himself a double, takes down one more in the form of KO, and Vision Eyes takes down Variety. Now, Destiny can keep chasing. And Vision Eyes is here with him as well, but they can't fight into the damage from Zeros. They have to retreat, and with Arkle alive, they still have Phoenix damage. Oh, absolutely. Especially Especially with the wall here from Zeros just augmenting some of those basic the attacks. The stun, so good. Final judgment, so close, but still having a third hit of that hieroglyphic assault. Zeros is nuts at this point in the game. All three Phoenix is down, and he is not done yet. Oh Uses the goodness. glyph to take down Envision Eyes. This could be Double game. kill for Zero on the Thoth. He is a running through Weegar and Servo, and Arkel wants to try and come in and not be outdone. Titan now being looked at by Team Dignitas. Swifty just barely makes it back to the fountain with three members. They've got the chance to take the game. Dignitas are going to find a 2-0 victory and continue in the upper brackets. That is going to be it. Dignitas able to put it to Weegar and Servo. 2-0 up against the Oceana team and 
They certainly had their moments, but Dignitas was just a little bit too much for them. Maybe a little bit of struggles there early, but they kept it clean and closed it out. Outside of some of those speed buff invades, Dignitas <laughs> played lights out here. Not yeah. really giving too much to play with for Weegar and Servo. That came in with an idea here with the Fafnir, the double hunters there, but couldn't get the objectives. It was Dignitas that had the vision control that was able to strike first on the objectives. And it was just too many different areas that Weegar and Servo had to worry about from Dignitas, right? Is is it variety that I had to worry about coming in, being unkillable and doing a bunch of damage? Is it zeros on the back line who can just who can destroy us from too far away? I mean, who do they focus in on? Is it Cubo Fred? It, it was it was a five-headed snake and they didn't have an answer. That's very true here. The two frontliners here, specifically from Variety and Cubo Fred, are so aggressive. Doesn't really matter what they play. They're going to be looking for those flashy plays. I think their best bet was to maybe shut down some of the momentum from either right. Arkill or Zeros to keep themselves relevant in the mid game. Well, who was the MVP for you, chat? Specifically Mix or chat? Go ahead and vote in the poll. That way we can know who you think it was. It couldn't have been Vote himself. Vote's not in this one, but certainly some strong Dignitas members to choose from. It was definitely Variety in my books because after yes. the proxying, he kills Envisionize, and then the Fire Giant Zone specifically, he blinks away at the last second, I think, before yeah. the basic <laughs> attack comes through from Reagan, and he is the reason that Dignitas secures that Fire Giant and then win the remainder of that team fight. Yeah, Variety played almost with a lack of respect, didn't it? It feel like Variety was like, I don't, no one could touch me right now. I, I'm untouchable at this point. So he certainly had a strong game for himself, but you could pick anybody from the squad. But we'll go ahead and let the desk break down that set. Thanks a lot, Finch and Tolly. Yeah, Dignitas take the 2-0, Ryan. No one really too surprised by that. Although we gone Servo game two, put in a much better shot. Much better in the early game. You can see that, they, I mean, it just takes a couple games, right, for these international teams to start to understand, okay, we can't do this at a competitive level, but maybe let's try this. And then it works out a little bit better, maybe with enough reps here. I mean, this is one of the advantages of this double elimination is that now they get to drop down. They'll face the loser of this next set, which is Space Station versus Black Dragons. And then they get another opportunity to apply what they've learned here against Dignitas. So back to this game, I mean, realistically, we saw the Nemesis works pretty well for Envision Eyes through that, but where was the real issue for, you know, for Week on Servo? Uh, Dignitas realized that they were still Dignitas and that they could still do good stuff and mm. that Zeros was hitting Thoth mid to late game. That's pretty much what happened. And you guys at home, you voted for Zeros to be MVP of that game, playing the Thoth, something we don't see too much of just lately, but he had a good side of things, found himself a couple of cheeky double kills. Man, I'll say, I mean, he, he looked great in the, towards oh. the mid to late game here for Dignitas, and, and he was just putting on a clinic. The entire uh, last left side Phoenix Siege, the spectators just following zeros, and that's a perfect opportunity to see how you can be a top tier mid laner at this level. Just hit your stuff and be in the right positions. No one can be close to him, and, and yet he is just being the aggressor at all times. Kind of difficult to get to him, I guess, being on the backside so much. I mean, Nemesis, she's got some trace potential with the slows, but very, very awkward. The, the, the dash away from Thoth, longer range than Swift Vengeance will get ne will get Nemesis. Plus, Thoth has that stun on the back end of that as well. Now, Envision Eyes had a couple good ideas. I mean, when, when Dignitas was transitioning from mid to left side Phoenix, Zero stunned someone, and as soon as Envision Eyes sees that, blink in Nemesis Alt, and if there was some real follow-up there, if you know if there was a raw or something like that that had long-range damage that could have followed up off that Nem ult, they probably would have killed Zeros in that instance, but the team composition from Weegar and Servo just didn't lend itself to that. Now with Dignitas as well, obviously that was their first win. They'll move up in the upper bracket to face off against either Space Station or Black Dragons. A lot of fans expecting Kliz to win. Are are they? I mean, they're, I hope. They're expecting. They're expecting actually, to. I saw Kliz right before we went in there, and I was like, hey, Kliz, you know, if you could just take it easy on Space Station because we haven't had a th game three quite yet, so maybe just like let him have a chance here and uh, and you know Baskin, he's got, you just don't want to hurt him. You don't want to hurt his ego. You don't know? Like talking about exactly. You but Dignitas, it's gonna be whoever opposition that will be. But how are Dignitas looking so far? I mean, you saw him in game one. Are they back to the usual? Did it, did they show 100%. too much in that set at all? You think? No, I don't think so. It's no surprise that. Robin is uh, is a priority pick for Cubo Fred. What do you know? Variety plays Achilles. Like I know. Th th exactly, this is all what you can expect from Dignitas. And I think the game one sort of weird composition that they ran will sit in the mind of Space Station. And if that's what they want to run, then I'm surprised that they showed it that early. Mm. But if I'm Dig, those were picks that I, you know, Zero is like I don't want to play Neath 
again this tournament, but I'm going to make them think that I might want to play Neath because there's no way that Space Station would have been thinking about Neath mid mm. before this set. Now they at least have to keep it open in their minds. Think about the Neath a little bit more as well, just to spitball on the potential idea that we could see it later on. If they do run into Space Station, we've seen Baskin play in the Apollos and the likes in the mid lane. Is Neath a better situational pick here? Not, I mean, it, it doesn't give up nearly as much pressure as a lot of regular mid-mages would, say, like the Thoth that's going to get bullied out pretty heavily by the Apollo. But if Baskin wants to go 1v1 against you, and Neath is not a good 1v1 god. She's much better at affecting the entire map. Her 2v2, 3v3, sure. excellent. But you do not want to take a 1v1 as Neath. If there is going to be a hunter in the mid lane for Dignitas, I expect it to be someone like a Hu Yi or a Kurnanos or a Chiron, someone who can take 1v1s a little bit more easily than Neath. Well, let's take a little look at the bracket. We've got the upper and the lower bracket available for you guys to see how things have worked out so far today. We're three sets deep. There's four sets today, and so far, Rival and E United have both advanced alongside now Dignitas. And we still got one set to play. In Space Station up against Black Dragons so far. But really, the team to watch is going to be Nocturnes. Yeah. I think tomorrow towards the beginning part. I mean, Mashu Boys didn't look particularly good against Rival, but I think that was more Rival than Mashu Boys for what it's worth. But Nocturnes did look very good against E United. They Excited did. to see what they bring tomorrow. Nocturnes definitely the team to watch out for so far. But we still have the Black Dragons later on today. And yes. They've had been around for a little while now. This team is very well known. Got some players who've been to multiple World Championships as well. So they've got the the knowledge. And, and that's the thing. One of the things that sets Nocturnes apart from a lot of the other international teams is that experience. Black Dragons is the only one who has close to as, as close to as much experience as Nocturne to do. So I expect to see that they look fairly competitive as well. Well, we'll be bringing you that set after this break. But first of all, this players from Dignitas are standing by for a quick interview after that last game. Dignitas, congratulations on your victory over Weekarn Servo. Now, I interviewed Cubo Fred and Oracle earlier on, and they didn't even know who the hell they were. Biggie coming from Australia. How much preparation did you have into this set? Uh, I didn't think, like, we didn't watch many VODs or any really because they qualified like a month ago. So we weren't really going to get anything from that. Like we weren't going to know how they were playing because like obviously with the double hunter that started, you know, imitating NA a bit more. So we couldn't really get any info there. We just did, I guess, prepped for, I guess, stronger teams. And then we knew that we had a couple of drafts we could try. And I know those players a lot. Like I played against those players, played with them, some of them on a, like teams and stuff and like back like a while ago. And we just kind of trusted our own like play, I guess. Yeah. Well, you all ended up looking really strong in game one. Game two took maybe a little bit longer, but certainly still ended up looking strong. Uh, those are the play where Cubo goes for speed, Trish falls too, <laughs> and kind of things get a little bit of, what were the comms like in that moment? Because that was the one moment where Servo looked like maybe they were in it, but then y'all came right back on. Uh, I don't know. I, I know Trick, uh, Fred went for speed, and then Trick said it was going to help him out. But I don't know. I think. They could probably have fought it, but like Fred just left tricks and then like he went back. I, I have no idea what's going on. I'm pretty on. sure <laughs> Harry was kind of. Yeah, Harry, like, right, Variety as well, was pretty so. close as well. It wasn't blue buff, I think, but he didn't yeah, rotate or. <laughs> variety in game number two. Does anyone have a leash on him? Because he's like proxying between tier one, tier two, casually kills and visionize, and then later down the road, he's like proxying near the tier two in Phoenix area. What's going on? I had no idea what was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think he's just got attitude problems. <laughs> This got attitude problems. Well, yeah. you all—you all—they're on the same side of the space station, I believe, right? So that's yeah. what you all will be going up against here next. If they're able to win, they, you know, it could certainly be uh, Black Dragon. So, have you all done any kind of work for space station in particular, or anything that you're looking out for with that roster? Uh, I think I know uh, the NA meta pretty well, and the NA playstyle, like where they tend to focus on the map and when they group, etc. Like what their rotations mean. So. I think as long as we, you know, watch their games today and we just prep a good, like, prep our own drafts, then we'll be fine. I think we're uh, watching the games and from scrims. I'd say we're strong. We're the stronger than them, but obviously, like, lands are different. I think you know, like, uh, obviously, if you remember from Super Regionals. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, guys. Is there any other shout outs you guys want to give before we let you go? Uh, just shout outs to my assault boys back in OC, <laughs> and they know who they are. We're going back to the servo. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.